Enmukar and the Lord of Arata. City, majestic bull-bearing vigor, and awesome splendor, Kulaba, Lacuna, breast of the storm, where destiny is determined, Anuk, great mountain, in the midst of Lacuna. There the evening meal of the great abode of An was set. In those days of yore, where the destinies were determined, the great princes allowed Anuk Kuluba's Iana to lift its head high. Plenty and carp floods, and the rain which brings forth dappled barleys, were then increased in Anuk Kuluba. Before the land of Dilmun yet existed, the Iana of Anug Kulaba was well founded, and the holy Jipa of Anana, in brick built Kulaba, shone forth like the silver in the load. Before Lacuna, carried Lacuna, before, before, carried, before the commerce was practised, before gold, silver, copper, tin, blocks of lapis lazuli, and mountain stones were brought down together from their mountains, before Lacuna, bathed for the festival, Lacuna, time passed, two lines missing. Lacuna was colourfully adorned, and Lacuna. The holy place was Lacuna, with flawless lapis lazuli, its interior beautifully formed like a white mess tree, bearing fruit. The lord of Arata placed on his head the golden crown for Inanna, but he did not please her like the lord of Kalaba. Arata did not build for holy Inanna, unlike the shrine Iana, the Jipa, the holy place, unlike brick-built Kalaba. At that time, the lord chosen by Inanna in her heart, chosen by Inanna in her holy heart from the bright mountain, Enmakar, the son of Utu, made a plea to his sister, the lady who grants desires, holy Inanna. My sister, let Arata fashion gold and silver skilfully on my behalf for Anug. Let them cut the flawless lapis lazuli from the blocks. Let them, Lacuna, the translucence of the flawless lapis lazuli, Lacuna, build a holy mountain in Anug. Let Arata build a temple brought down from heaven, your place of worship, the shrine Iana. Let Arata skillfully fashion the interior of the holy Jipa, your abode. May I, the radiant youth, may I be embraced there by you. Let Arata submit beneath the yoke of Anug on my behalf. Let the people of Arata bring down for me the mountain stones from their mountain. Build the great shrine for me. Erect the great abode for me. Make the great abode, the abode of the gods, famous for me. Make my me prosper in Kalaba. Make the Abzu grow for me like a holy mountain. Make Eridug gleam for me like the mountain range. Cause the Abzu shrine to shine forth for me like the silver in the load. When in the Abzu I utter praise. When I bring the me from Eridug, when in lordship I am adorned with the crown like a purified shrine, when I place on my head the holy crown in Anug Kulaba, then may the Lacuna of the great shrine bring me into the Jipa, and may the Lacuna of the Jipa bring me into the great shrine. May the people marvel admiringly, and may Utu witness it in joy. Thereupon the splendor of Holian, the lady of the mountains, the wise, the goddess whose call is for the Ama Ukumgal Ana, Inanna, the lady of all lands, called to Enmakar, the son of Utu. Come, Enmakar, I shall offer you advice. Let my counsel be heeded. I shall speak words to you. Let them be heard. Choose from the troops as a messenger, one who is eloquent of speech and endowed with endurance. Where and to whom shall he carry the important message of wise Inanna? Let him bring it up to the Zubi Mountains. Let him descend with it from the Zubi Mountains. Let Susin and the land of Ankan humbly salute Inanna like tiny mice. In the great mountain ranges, 
let the teeming multitudes grovel in the dust for her. Arata shall submit beneath the yoke to a nug. The people of Arata shall bring down the mountain stones from their mountains, and shall build the great shrine for you, and erect the great abode for you, and will cause the great abode, the abode of the gods, to shine forth for you, will make your me flourish in Kulaba, will make the Abzu grow for you like a holy mountain, will make Eridug shining for you like a mountain range, will cause Abzu shrine to shine forth for you like the glitter in the load. When in the Abzu you utter praise, when you bring the me from Eridug, when in lordship you're adorned with the crown like the purified shrine, when you place on your head the holy crown in Unug Kulaba, then may the lacuna of the great shrine bring you unto the Japar, and may the lacuna of the Japar bring you into the great shrine. May the people marvel admiringly, and may Utu witness it in joy, because lacuna shall carry daily when lacuna in the evening cool lacuna. In the place of Demuzid, where the ewes, kids, and lambs are numerous, and the people of Arata shall run around you like the mountain sheep and the Akalag fields, the fields of Demuzid. Rise like the sun over my holy breast, you are the jewel of my throat. Praise be to you, Enmakar, son of Utu. The Lord gave heed to the words of holy Inanna and chose from the troops as a messenger one who was eloquent of speech and endowed with endurance. Where and to whom will he carry the important message of wise Inanna? You shall bring it up to the Zubi Mountains. You shall descend with it from the Zubi Mountains. Let Susin and the land of Ankan humbly salute Inanna like tiny mice. In the great mountain ranges, let the teeming multitudes grovel in the dust for her, Messenger, speak to the Lord of Arata and say to him, Lest I make the people fly off from that city like a wild dove from its trees, lest I make them fly around like a bird over its well-founded nest, lest I requite them as if at a current market rate, lest I make it gather dust like an utterly destroyed city, lest, like a settlement cursed by Enki and utterly destroyed, I too utterly destroy Arata, lest the devastation which swept destructively, and in whose wake Inanna arose, shrieked and yelled aloud, I too wreak a sweeping devastation there. Let Arata pack nuggets of gold and leather sacks, placing alongside it the Kamiya ore, package up precious metals, and load the packs on donkeys of the mountains. Then may the junior Enlil of Suma, have them build for me, the Lord who Nudimud has chosen in his sacred heart, a mountain of shining me. Have them make it luxuriant for me, like a boxwood tree. Have them make its shining horns colourful for me, as when Utu comes forth from his chamber. Have them make its doorposts gleam brightly for me. Chant to him the holy song, the incantation sung in its chambers. The Incantation of New Dimmud. On that day, when there is no snake, when there is no scorpion, when there is no hyena, when there is no lion, when there is neither dog nor wolf, when there is thus neither fear nor trembling, man has no rival. At such time, may the lands of Kabur and Hamazi, the many-tongued, and Suma, the great mountain of the Mi, of magnificence, and Akkad, the land possessing all that is befitting, and the Martu land, resting in security, the whole universe, the well-guarded people. May they all address Enlil together in a single language. For at that time, the ambitious lords, for the ambitious princes, for the ambitious kings, Enki, for the ambitious lords, for the ambitious princes, for the ambitious kings, for the ambitious lords, for the ambitious princes, for the ambitious kings, Enki, the lord of abundance, and of steadfast decisions, the wise and knowing lord of the land, the expert of the gods, 
chosen for wisdom, the lord of Eridug, shall change the speech in their mouths, as many as he had placed there, and so the speech of mankind is truly one. The Lord added further instructions for the messenger, going to the mountains, to Arata. Messenger, by night, drive on like the south wind, by day be up like the dew. The messenger gave heed to the words of his king. He journeyed by starry night, and by day he travelled with Utu of heaven. Where and to whom will he carry the important message of Inanna with its stinging tone? He brought it up to the Zubi Mountains. He descended with it from the Zubi Mountains. Susin and the land of Ankan humbly saluted Inanna like tiny mice. In the great mountain ranges, the teeming multitudes groveled in the dust for her. He traversed five mountains, six mountains, seven mountains. He lifted his eyes as he approached Arata. He stepped joyfully into the courtyard of Arata. He made known the authority of his king. Openly he spoke out the words in his heart. The messenger transmitted the message of the Lord to Arata. Your father, my master, has sent me to you, the Lord of Anug. The Lord of Kalaba has sent me to you. What is it to me what your master has spoken? What is it to me what he has said? This is what my master has spoken. This is what he has said. My king, who from his birth has been fitted for lordship, the lord of Anug, the Sajkal snake living in Suma, who pulverizes mountains like flour, the stag of the tall mountains, endowed with princely antlers, wild cow, kid pouring at the holy soapwort with its hoof, whom the good cow had given birth to in the heart of the mountains, Enmakar, the son of Utu, has sent me to you. The Lord of Arata speaks. What is it to me what your master has spoken? What is it to me what he has said? This is what my master has said. Lest I make the people fly off from that city like a wild dove from its tree, lest I make them fly around like a bird over its well-founded nest, lest I requite them as if at the current market rate, lest I make it gather dust like an utterly destroyed city, lest, like a settlement cursed by Enki, and utterly destroyed, I too utterly destroy Arata, lest, like the devastation which swept destructively, and in whose wake Inanna arose, shrieked and yelled aloud, I too wreak a sweeping devastation there. Let Arata pack nuggets of gold in leather sacks, placing alongside it the Kamiya ore, package up precious metals, and load the packs onto donkeys of the mountains, and then may the junior Enlil of Suma have them build for me, the lord who Nudimud has chosen in his sacred heart, a mountain of shining me. Have them make it luxuriant for me like a boxwood tree. Have them make its shining horns colourful for me, when Utu comes forth from his chamber, have them make his doorpost gleam brightly for me. Chant to him, for me, the holy song, the incantation sung in its chambers, the incantation of Nudimud. Say whatever you will to me, and I shall announce that message in the shrine of Iana, as glad tidings to the scion of him with the glistening beard, whom under his stalwart cow gave birth to in the mountain of the shining me who was reared on the soil of Arata, who has given suck at the udder of the good cow, who is suited for office in Kulaba, the great mountain of me, to Enmakar, the son of Utu, I shall repeat it in his Jipa, fruitful and flourishing as Mez tree, to my king, the lord of Kulaba. When he had spoken thus to him, the lord of Arata replied, Messenger, Speak to your king, the lord of Kalaba, and say to him, It is I, the lord suited to purification, I whom the heavenly neckstock, queen of heaven and earth, the goddess of the numerous me, holy Inanna, has brought to Arata, the mountain of the shining me, I whom she has let bar the entrance of the mountains as if with a great door, 
How then shall a rata submit to a nug? A rata's submission to a nug is out of the question. Say this to him. When he had spoken thus to him, the messenger replied to the Lord of Arata, the great queen of heaven who rides upon the awesome me, dwelling on the peaks of the bright mountains, adorning the dais of the bright mountains, my lord and master, who is her servant, has had them install in her as the divine queen of Iana. Arata shall bow, O lord, in absolute submission. She has spoken to him thus, in brick-built Kulaba. Thereupon the Lord became depressed and deeply troubled. He had no answer. He was searching for an answer. He stared at his own feet, trying to find an answer. He found an answer and gave a cry. He bellowed the answer to the messenger, like a bull to the messenger. Messenger, speak to your king, the Lord of Calava, and say to him, this great mountain range is a mez tree, grown high to the sky. Its roots form a net, and its branches are a snare. It may be a sparrow, but it has the talons of an anzard bird, or of an eagle. The barrier of Anana is perfectly made and impenetrable. Those eagle talons make the blood of the enemy run from the bright mountain. Although in Arata there is weeping, Lacuna, Water libations are offered and flour is sprinkled. On the mountain, sacrifices and prayers are offered in obeisance. With fewer than five or ten men, how can mobilized Anug proceed against the Zubi mountains? Your king is heading in all haste against my military might, but I am equally eager for a contest, as the proverb goes. He who ignores a rival does not get to eat everything up, like the bull which ignores the bull at its side. But he who acknowledges a contest can be the outright winner, like the bull which acknowledges the bull at its side. Or does he reject me in this contest, like Lacuna, can match no one, or does he still reject me in this contest? Again, I have words to say to you, messenger. I have an artful proposal to make to you, Lacuna. May it get across to you, Lacuna. Repeat this to your master, to the lord of Calaba, a lion lying on its paws in Iana, a bull bellowing within it, within his jipa, fruitful and flourishing as a mez tree. The mountain range is a warrior, high like Utu, going to his abode at twilight, like one from whose face blood drips, or like Nana, who is majestic in the high heavens, like him whose countenance shines with radiance who, Lacuna, is like the woods and the mountains. Now, if Enmakar just makes straight for thee, Lacuna, of Arata, for the benevolent protective spirit of the mountain of holy powers, for Arata, which is like a bright crown of heaven, then I shall make my preeminence clear, and he need not pour barley into sacks, nor have it carted, nor have that barley carried into the settlements, nor place collectors over the labourers. But if he were actually to have barley poured into the carrying nets, and to have it loaded on the pack asses at whose side reserved donkeys have been placed, and were to have it heaped up in a pile in the courtyard of Arata, were he really to heap it up in such a manner, and were Inanna, the luxuriance of the grain pile, who is the illuminator of the lands, and the ornament of the settlements, who adorns the seven walls, who is the heroic lady, fit for battle, who, as the heroine of the battleground, makes the troops dance the dance of Inanna, were she to actually cast off Arata, as if to a carrion-pursuing dog, then in that case I should submit to him. He would indeed have made me know his preeminence. Like the city, I in my smallness would submit to him. So say to him. After he had spoken thus to him, the Lord of Arata made the messenger repeat the message, just as he himself had said it. The messenger turned on his thigh like a wild cow. Like a sandfly, he went on his way in the morning calm. He set foot joyfully in brick-built Calaba. 
the messenger rushed to the great courtyard, the courtyard of the throne room. He repeated it, word perfect to his master, the Lord of Calaba. He even bellowed at him like a bull, and Enmakar listened to him like an ox driver. The king had him sit, Lacuna, at his right side. As he turned his left side to him, he said, Does Arata really understand the implications of his own stratagem? After day had broken and Utsu had risen, the sun god of the land lifted his head high. The king combined the Tigris with the Euphrates. He combined the Euphrates with the Tigris. Large vessels were placed in the open air, and he stood small vessels beside them, like lambs lying on the grass, Lacuna. Vessels were placed in the open air adjacent to them. Then the king, Enmakar, the son of Utu, placed wide apart the Ekda vessels, which were of gold. Thereupon the tablet, Lacuna, the pointed stylus of the assembly, the golden statue fashioned on a propitious day, beautiful Nanibgal, grown with fair luxuriance, Nisaba, the lady of broad wisdom, opened for him her holy house of wisdom. He entered the palace of heaven and became attentive. Then the Lord opened his mighty storehouse and firmly set his great Ligda measure upon the ground. The king removed his old barley from the other barley. He soaked the green malt all through with water, its lip, lacuna, the herein plant. He narrowed the meshes of the carrying nets. He measured out in full the barley for the granary, adding for the teeth of locusts. He had it loaded on the pack asses at whose side reserved donkeys were placed. The king, the lord of broad wisdom, the lord of Anug, the lord of Kulaba, dispatched them directly to Arata. He made the people go on to Arata on their own, like ants out of crevices. Again, the Lord added instructions for the messenger, going to the mountains, to Arata. Messenger, speak to the Lord of Arata, and say to him, The base of my scepter is the divine power of magnificence. Its crown provides a protective shade over Kalaba. Under its spreading branches, holy Inanna refreshes herself in the shrine of Iana. Let him snap off a splinter from it, and hold that in his hand. Let him hold it in his hand like a string of cornelian beads, like a string of lapis lazuli beads. Let the Lord of Arata bring that before me. So say to him. After he had thus spoken to him, the messenger went on his way to Arata. His feet raised the dust of the road, and made the little pebbles of the hills thud, like a dragon prowling the desert. He was unopposed. After the messenger reached Arata, the people of Arata stepped forward to admire the pack asses. In the courtyard of Arata, the messenger measured out in full the barley for the granary, adding for the teeth of locusts. As if from the rains of heaven and the sunshine, Arata was filled with abundance. As when the gods returned to their seats, Arata's hunger was sated. The people of Arata covered their fields with water-soaked green malt. Afterwards, courtiers and Katam officials, Lacuna, two lines unclear. The citizens of Arata were mindful. He revealed the matter to Arata, attentively, in Arata, from the hand, Lacuna, his hand, Lacuna, to the lord of Anug. As for us, in the direst hunger, in our direst famine, let us prostrate ourselves before the Lord of Kalaba. The eloquent elders wrung their hands in despair, leaning against the wall. Indeed, they were even placing their treasuries at the disposal of the Lord. His scepter, Lacuna, in the palace, Lacuna. Openly he spoke out the words in his heart. Your father, my master, sent me to you. Enmakar, the son of Utu, sent me to you. What is it to me that what your master has spoken? What is it to me what he has said? This is what my master has spoken. This is what my master has said. The base of my scepter is the divine power of magnificence. Its crown provides a protective shade over Kalaba. Under its spreading branches, 
Holy Inanna refreshes herself in the shrine Iana. Let him snap off a splinter from it, and hold that in his hand. Let him hold it like a string of cornelian beads, a string of lapis lazuli beads. Let the Lord of Arata bring that before me. So say to him. After he had spoken thus to him, for that reason he went inside the sanctuary, Lacuna, and lay himself down in a fast. Day broke. He discussed the matter at length. He spoke unspeakable words. He circulated with this matter as if it were barley eaten by a donkey. And what did one speak to another? What did one say to another? What one said to another, so indeed it was. Messenger, speak to your king, the lord of Calaba, and say to him, Let him put in his hand and contemplate a scepter that is not of wood, nor designated as wood, not poplar as in a chariot, not reedwork as in whip handles, not gold nor copper, nor genuine cumia metal, nor silver, nor cornelian, nor lapis lazuli. Let him snap off a splinter from that, and hold it in his hand. Let him hold it in his hand like a string of cornelian beads, a string of lapis lazuli beads. Let the Lord of Calaba bring that before me. So say to him. After he had spoken to him thus, the messenger went off like a young donkey, braying as it is cut off from the chariot tongue. He trotted like an onager running on dry land. He filled his mouth with wind. He ran in one track, like a long-wooled sheep, butting other sheep in its fury. He set foot joyfully in brick-built Calaba. He transmitted the message word for word to his master, the Lord of Calaba. Now Enki gave Enmakar wisdom, and the Lord gave instructions to his chief steward. In his house, Lacuna. The king received Lacuna. He wrapped it up like Lacuna and inspected it. He pounded Lacuna with a pestle like herbs. He poured it like oil on the Lacuna reed. From the sunlight it emerged into the shade and from the shade it emerged into the sunlight. After five years, ten years had passed, he split the lacuna, reed with an axe. The Lord looked at it, pleased, and poured on lacuna, fine oil, fine oil of the bright mountains. The Lord placed the scepter in the hands of the messenger, going to the mountains. The messenger, whose journeying to Arata was like a pelican over the hills, like a fly over the ground, who darted through the mountains as swiftly as carp swim, reached Arata. He set foot joyfully in the courtyard of Arata, and he placed the scepter in Lacuna. He, Lacuna, and Lacuna, it. The Lord of Arata, eyeing the scepter, which was Lacuna, in the sanctuary, his holy dwelling, he, the Lord, called to his Katam official, Arata is indeed like a slaughtered sheep. Its roads are indeed like those of the rebel lands. Since Holy Inanna has given the primacy of Arata to the Lord of Calaba, it now seems that Holy Inanna is looking with favour on her man, who has sent a messenger to make the severe message as clear as the light of Utu. So in Arata, where can one go in this crisis? How long before the yoke rope becomes bearable? As for us, in the direst hunger, in our direst famine, are we to prostrate ourselves before the Lord of Calaba? The Lord of Arata entrusted the message to the messenger, as if it were an important tablet. Messenger, speak to your master, the Lord of Calaba, and say to him, A champion who is not black-coloured, a champion who is not white-coloured, a champion who is not brown-coloured, a champion who is not red-coloured, a champion who is not yellow-coloured, a champion who is not multicoloured. Let him give you such a champion. My champion will compete against his champion, and let the more able one prevail. Say this to him. After he had spoken to him thus, the messenger set off, Ulum Alam. In brick-built Calaba, he was speechless, like a lacuna. 
He gazed like a goat on the mountain slopes, he, Lacuna, as if it were a huge mere snake coming out of a field. In Lacuna, he lifted his head. Lacuna, of Arata, Lacuna, from his seat, he addressed him like a raging torrent. Messenger, speak to the Lord of Arata and say to him, A garment that is not black-coloured, a garment that is not white-coloured, a garment that is not brown-coloured, a garment that is not red-coloured, a garment that is not yellow-coloured, a garment that is not multicoloured, I shall give him such a garment. My champion is embraced by Enlil. I shall send him such a champion. My champion will compete against his champion, and let the more able one prevail. Say this to him. Second, speak to him and say, Let him immediately pass from subterfuge. Lacuna. In his city, let them go before him like sheep. Let him, like their shepherd, follow behind them. As he goes, let the mountain of bright lapis lazuli humble itself before him like a crushed reed. And let them heap up its shining gold and silver in the courtyard of Arata for Inanna, the lady of Iana. Third, speak to him and say, Lest I make the people fly off from that city like a wild dove from its tree, lest I smash them like Lacuna, lest I requite them as if at the current market rate, lest I make Lacuna, then walk in Lacuna. When he goes, let them take the mountain stones and rebuild for me the great shine of Eridug, the Abzu, the Enun. Let them adorn its architrave for me. Lacuna. Let them make its protection spread over the land for me. His speaking, Lacuna, recite his omen to him. At that time, the Lord, Lacuna, on the throne, Dias is, and on the chairs, the noble seed, Lacuna. His speech was substantial, and its contents extensive. The messenger, whose mouth was heavy, was not able to repeat it. Because the messenger, whose mouth was tired, was not able to repeat it, the Lord of Calaba patted some clay and wrote the message as if on a tablet. Formerly the writing of messages on clay was not established. Now, under the sun and on that day, it was indeed so. The Lord of Calaba inscribed the message like a tablet. It was just like that. The messenger was like a bird, flapping his wings, he raged forth like a wolf, following a kid. He traversed five mountains, six mountains, seven mountains. He lifted up his eyes as he approached Arata. He stepped joyfully into the courtyard of Arata. He made known the authority of his king. He openly, he spoke out the words in his heart. The messenger transmitted the message to the Lord of Arata. Your father, my master, has sent me to you. The Lord of Anug, the Lord of Calaba, has sent me to you. What is it to me what your master has spoken? What is it to me what your master has said? This is what my master has spoken. This is what he has said. My king is like a huge mez tree, Lacuna, son of Enlil. This tree has grown high, uniting heaven and earth. Its crown reaches heaven, its trunk is set upon the earth. He who made it to shine forth in lordship and kingship, Enmakar, the son of Utu, has given me a clay tablet. O lord of Arata, after you have examined the clay tablet, after you have learned the content of the message, say whatever you will say to me, and I shall announce that message in the shrine Iana as glad tidings to the scion of him with the glistening beard, whom his stalwart cow gave birth to in the mountains of the shining May who is reared on the soil of Arata, who was given suck at the udder of the good cow, who is suited for office in Kulaba, the mountain of the great May, to Enmakar, the son of Utu, I shall repeat in his Jipa, fruitful as a flourishing mez tree, to my king, the lord of Kulaba. After he had spoken thus to him, 
the Lord of Arata received his kiln-fired tablet from the messenger. The Lord of Arata looked at the tablet. The transmitted message was just nails, and his brow expressed anger. The Lord of Arata looked at his kiln-fired tablet. At that moment, the Lord worthy of the crown of kingship, the son of Enlil, the god Iker, thundering in heaven and earth, caused a raging storm, a great lion, in Lacuna. He was making the mountains quake, Lacuna. He was convulsing the mountain range, Lacuna. The awesome radiance, Lacuna, of his breast, he caused the mountain range to raise its voice in joy. On Arata's parched flanks, in the midst of the mountains, wheat grew of its own accord, and chickpeas also grew of their own accord, and they brought the wheat which grew of its own accord into the granary of Lacuna, for the lord of Arata, and he heaped it up before him in the courtyard of Arata. The lord of Arata looked at the wheat. The messenger's eyes looked askance, Lacuna. The lord of Arata called unto the messenger, Inanna, the lady of all the lands, has not run away from the primacy of her city Arata, nor has she stolen it for a nook. She has not run away from her Izagina, nor has she stolen it for the shrine of Iana. She has not run away from the mountain of the Shrining May, nor has she stolen it for brick-built Kalaba. She has not run away from the adorned bed, nor has she stolen it for the shining bed. She has not run away from the purification for the Lord, nor has she stolen it for the Lord of Anug, the Lord of Kalaba. Inanna, Lady of all the lands, has surrounded Arata on its right and left, for her like a rising flood. They are people whom she has separated from other people. They are people whom Demuzid has made step forth from other people, who firmly established the holy words of Inanna. Let the clever champion and the lacuna of Demuzid whirl about. Quickly, come now, lacuna. After the flood had swept over Inanna, the lady of all the lands, from her great love of Demuzid, had sprinkled the water of life upon those who had stood in the face of the flood and made the land subject to them. The clever champion, when he came, had covered his head with a colourful turban and wrapped himself in a garment of lion skins. Four lines unclear. Inanna, Lacuna. Her song was pleasing to her spouse, Ama Ukumgal Anna. Since that time, she has made it perfect in the holy ear, the holy ear of Demuzed, has sung it and let the words be known. When the old woman came to the mountain of the Shining May, she went up to him like a maiden, who in her day is perfect, painted her eyes with coal, wrapped herself in a white garment, came forth with the good crown like the moonlight. She arranged the lacuna on her head. She made Enmakar, her spouse, occupy the throne dais with her. She raised up lacuna, and indeed for Arata, the ewes and their lambs now multiply. Indeed for Arata, the mother goats and their kids multiply. Indeed for Arata, the cows and their calves multiply. Indeed for Arata, the donkey mares and their black swift-footed foals multiply. In Arata, they say together, Let them heap up and pile up for the grain piles. The abundance is truly your abundance. After having made Lacuna for the Lord of Arata, let him Lacuna. Three lines missing. An unidentified person speaks. Befitting Lacuna, the Ilu song of the heart. Lacuna, your abundance in his Lacuna. Enlil has granted you Lacuna, and may Lacuna be known Lacuna. His father was not luxuriantly fertile, and poured forth no semen. Enlil, king of all the lands, Lacuna, in accordance with the tasks which he has now established, the people of Arata, Lacuna, their task of plying gold, silver, and lapis lazuli, the men who, Lacuna, golden fruit, fruit trees, with their figs and grapes, 
shall heap the fruit up in great mounds, lacuna, and shall dig out the flawless lapis lazuli from the roots of the trees, and shall remove the succulent parts of the reeds from the crown of the trees, and then shall heap them up in a pile in the courtyard of Iana for Inanna, the lady of Iana. Come, my king, I shall offer you advice. Let my counsel be heeded. I shall speak words to you. Let them be heard. Let the people choose a man, Lacuna, of the foreign lands, and let the people of Arata speak, Lacuna. When I go from here, the ever-sparkling lady gives me my kingship. Jektin Anana, Lacuna. In that city, Lacuna. Festivals were not, Lacuna, daily. Six lines missing.